getting our new target set up. So you think this is gonna be big enough to see it hit it a thousand? Just barely. Yeah, I mean, it's only, it's a 10 inch target, and so at a thousand yards, it's basically one minute of angle size target. But, I do like the target stand. You, uh, did a great job on that. Thank you. Start making the selling like so. Yeah, I mean, I think people would buy these. What do you think? You ready? Let's do it. All right. <laughs> you find it? I think so. What range are you getting on that? Twelve hundred on the dot. It looks like. Twelve hundred yards. Yeah, you can't even see the target from here. Like, just barely even the target stand, even through the range finder. 1219. 1219. So, we need to go 200 yards closer to the target. <laughs> Alright guys, so before we actually get into the fun part of this video, uh, before we get into the shooting part and everything like that, uh, which if you just want to go ahead and skip to that part, you can, I guess, if that's what you want to do. Uh, but first, if you want to actually learn something and want to kind of see a little, take a little bit of a deeper dive into exactly how this is done, or at least how I do it, why don't you stick around for a few minutes while I explain it, and then we'll jump into the shooting video. Alright? So, the bullets that I am using are Alco Bullets. Uh, this company here. We can go here. And I'm using the Precision .452 caliber smokeless muzzleloader bullets. So, I have tried both of the 325 grain and the 300 grain. The 325 grain ones do not stabilize in my rifle very good. They uh, they don't hold a very tight group for me and well that's because the bullet's a little too long I think for the rate of twist that I have going on. But the 300 grain version actually does a really really good job. Yes these bullets are a little bit expensive but you've got to kind of think that these are these are pretty much custom made handmade you know really high quality bullets so you kind of pay you know you get what you pay for most of the time so when we look at these you can see here that these are a G1 profile projectile the they are not a boat tail they're flat based and they have a straight section on the shank of the bullet and then they have an ogive so they are a classic like g1 profile which is the reason why they set the bc as a g1 and not a g7 because g7 drag model drag function would be inappropriate for the actual shape of this bullet this projectile okay so their G1 ballistic coefficient on their website stayed at 0.485, but there is some specifics to that. They are running this out of at uh, calculated 2,500 feet per second for this bullet. Now, I have actually talked to Bill recently about this, and and we kind of agreed, and you know he alluded to. The fact that because they are not running 2,500 feet per second out of my rifle, that the ballistic coefficient is much lower in my, you know, for my purposes and everything like that. 
Um, I am running an appropriate twist rate, which is a 1 in 20. Out of my rifle, the Browning Highwall 1885. Alright, so let's go over here to JBM Ballistics. So originally, I punched in the ballistics for uh, .485 ballistic coefficient, 452 caliber, 300 grain, chronograph 5 feet from the muzzle. Uh, my average velocity that I'm getting with, with these is 2,050 feet per second, sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little lower, but 2,050 is the average. Um, so I run the ballistic table, or this calculation for 1100 yards because we're shooting inside of that we're shooting just past a thousand so I run it for 1100 yards and I set my range increment in 10 yard increments uh, the temperature was about 60 degrees I originally did this calculation for I think 70 degrees but the actual temperature we were shooting in was 60 so you're gonna see here in just a little bit uh, when we get into shooting, you'll see the differences, and uh, everything I'm talking about right now will make more sense. So if we run the calculation, we get this table. And if we go all the way down to a 1,000 yards, actually, where we were shooting, it was 1,034 yards you can see that it, the calculated drop is 20.3 mils for 60 degrees if my muzzle velocity is still actually 2050 feet per second okay but and what happened what actually happened in practice when we went out and shot was my muzzle velocity was good still staying around that 2050 mark but because my bullets are nowhere near 2500 feet per second which is the calculated maximum ballistic coefficient of that of this projectile mine's running to you know a little over 2000 feet per second i started playing around with the with the uh ballistic coefficient and if we bring it down to like 0.310 I think is where I ended up somewhere in there leaving everything the same if I adjust the ballistic coefficient down to 0.310 we see at 1030 yards we're at 28 mils calculated and the actual dial-up and holdover in my rifle that I ended up using to get to the target, you know, where I was hitting actually around the target, I never did actually make an impact, but I'm going to explain that here in a little while, here just a few minutes, was the actual calculated parts, 28 mils. So what I ended up doing was my scope, maxed out at 18.4 mils and then I ended up holding over an additional nine and a half mils in my scope which brings it to 27.9 mils so 28 mils so that's about right where it's at so 310 for the ballistic coefficient is actually more appropriate uh, based on my muzzle velocity and everything else all the other variables and you can see here that at the target at, you know, 1,030 yards, it's still got uh, about 460 foot-pounds of energy. Still traveling about 830 feet per second. The time of flight is over two and a half seconds according to this, 2.681 seconds. So if you think about that, that's a long, long ways. So if we go back, and we set the zero because this is based off 102 yard zero for the calculations if we set the zero at the range of the target which is 1034 yards we can look at and actually see how high the max ordinate is which is pretty cool about this program is somewhere in here it looks like the maximum ordinate was 
Oh, we're still going. Let's see, before it starts trending back down, our maximum ordinate was 376.8 inches above the line of sight to the target, or 18.4 mils. So if you wanted to do the calculations on that, how many feet the bullet actually was in the air, you would take uh, 376.8 and divide that by 12. That's 31.4 feet above you know your direct line of sight to the target through your scope. So that's pretty neat that you're able to do that. And that actually gives you your, you know, your aim and uh, your shift from 100 yards to 1,000, you're actually aiming 28.2 mils. So we're, you know, right there at 28 mils, which at 1,000 yards, one mil is actually a big amount of real estate there. One mil at 1,000 yards is 36 inches. So. Every tenth of a mil at a thousand yards is going to be uh, 3.6 inches, give or take. All right, so getting into the part where I missed the target and actually did not hit the target, and there were actually a couple times where we did not even see the impacts in the dirt. But there was quite a bit of foliage around the target area, and it's very possible that it just hit, went into some brush and, and, you know, off to the left or right side of the target, and it just didn't make enough impact in the dirt to kick the dirt up. So, no, you know, no visible impact there. We didn't really have ourselves set up in a way, and at least in the proper way, you should set up to be able to watch bullet trace. But also part of the problem with shooting a bullet as slow as this one is that the bullet trace gets pretty hard to see when the bullets, you know, obviously before we even get to the target, like, you know, we're going subsonic at 520 yards. That's halfway to the target pretty much, you know, so it's really, and your transonic zone is generally accepted from 1.2 uh, Mach 1.2 down to Mach 0.8. So the whole transonic zone is from, we're looking at a transonic zone starting at about 350 yards and continuing on affecting the bullet all the way to 870 yards. That's how big the transonic zone is. And then once we're past that, you know, obviously from 870 on out to one, you know, 1030 or 1034 in this case, that is true subsonic range. So that's a whole lot of, you know, range there. It's actually tells us a few things that because I was actually able to get pretty close to the target is that the bullets are actually likely still stabilized. Um, now on the occasional, the couple rounds that we actually fired and did not see any impacts with, you know, once we got on target that we shot and there was no impact, at least no visible impact on the, on the hillside, um, that could be a case of maybe that particular bullet began tumbling at some point and then veered way off of its you know initial trajectory so that could be it you know one of the scenarios there i'm not a hundred percent sure but it's something to think about but yeah uh the target we're shooting at is a 10 inch plate and that sounds pretty big but at a thousand yards, or a little further than a thousand yards, that is pretty much the same scale as if you were shooting a one inch plate at 100 yards. Actually, if you do the whole math and like dial it down, it is 0.96 MOA is the size of the target that we are shooting. So that is a very small target at a very long distance and if you know 
a lot of people think about shooting long range until they get out there and they actually see what a target looks like at a thousand yards. It's a very, very small target. You know, a 10 inch plate's a very small target um, to be able to try to even, you know, to even try to see it, let alone hit it. Um, also, adding to the complications of being able to hit this target, I'm using a fixed 10 power SWFA scope. So my magnification is fixed at 10, you know, 10 times magnification. Um, so at that range, I don't have the ability to, to, to uh, crank up my magnification like I do on some of my other rifles up to, you know, 25 power if I want to. I'm stuck at 10 power. And basically the crosshairs almost cover the target up. It's almost to the point to where I kind of want to set the zero in such a way that the target, that I'm actually not putting the crosshairs on the target, but maybe bracketing the target in the corner, uh, you know, in one of the corners, so that I can actually see the target and then, you know, not cover it up with the crosshairs. Um, the, the fixed 10 power scope, in my opinion, is actually really cool. I have a fixed 12 power on my 308, and I think the 12 power would have afforded me just a little bit better sight picture. But the the whole goal, the reason why I went with that scope was because it had 40 mils of total elevation range, which in theory would give you 20 mils of usable elevation range. In practice, it gave me 18.4. That's where it maxed out at. So, I'm not complaining. 18.4 mils in a scope is a lot, you know, without any added elevation through a canned scope base or anything like that. Um, so, getting back into it, let's go watch. Let's jump into watching some of the, the shooting and show you guys how it went. All right, thanks for sticking with me through this technical process, if you are one of those that did that. Welcome back to Recreational Sniper. Today we are going 1,000 yards, and the actual range on the target is... 1,034 yards. Doing things a little bit different. Uh, Garen is shooting his 308 Remington 700, and I am shooting a Browning chambered in 454 Casul. Finally, getting to see what these bullets can actually do. So here we go. So I need to come up 19 mils. It's five, 10, 15. Well, it looks like I'm running out at Dang. 18.4. That's close enough. Huh? That's close enough. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. First round. It's a 300 grain Alco ULD. on target
That wasn't ready. Huh? Wasn't ready? No, I don't know where that hit. I am now, though. You ready? Yeah. Didn't see it. No. May not be waiting long enough because at that range, the flight time is over two seconds. I'm gonna aim another mill higher. I'm not seeing it. I didn't, I didn't see anything. I'm gonna play back the uh, play back the camera on the spotting scope and see if we got anything on there. I'm gonna put a couple more rounds up down range. Reviewed the video footage through the spotting scope. Was unable to see any impacts. Uh, the wind at the target is actually pretty pretty stout i uh, don't know exactly how fast it's going but it looks like it's actually blowing uphill which is pretty common uh, from air right when the sun's come out and the air is heating up and it's going rising up out of the valley so it's actually blowing uphill where the target is um, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to aim two mils high, so that's going to give me 20.4 mils. And we'll see if that does any good. on target I saw the impact it is very low See where I was aiming. Hit about four mils low. So the correct solution will be about 24 and a half mils of elevation at this range. So I'm going to go ahead and count down one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna aim down my reticle six mils. If 
firing. Still low. About eight minutes. Huh? Eight minutes low. Eight minutes low? <laughs> yeah. I know that's not what you're using, but. That mirage is getting pretty stout with the sun out on top of that hill. All right, I'm gonna come up to eight mils, add two more mils. Looks like you came up about four minutes or whatever that is in mills. Okay. I guess I'm gonna give it the whole radical range. Aim the full 10 mils up that I've got. Uh, Do what? That's about eight minutes high. High? Yeah. I guess I'm retarded. I wasn't even aiming at the target. Can you see it? Barely. I got it now that the sun is not out. Huh? Just low. Just low. So that's nine mils of holdover in the scope. 18.4 dialed up. I'm going to use the same point of aim. Low and right. Low right. I think it's pretty amazing that I can even get that close to the target.
I didn't even see that. Didn't see it either. These 300 grain bullets do actually kick the dirt up though. Yeah. <laughs> no surprise there though. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Looks like about one. Oh, that hit about three quarters of a mil to the right. I'm going to shoot one more and then I'm going to give the rifle a break, let it cool down. I'm holding. I'm holding nine and a half mils and it's shooting about parallel with the target. see it. Me either. Think your barrel's getting hot? Yeah, it's getting a little warm. I'm gonna let her cool down. Check the battery on this camera up here. Come on. Make some noise up there. Yeah, yours is gonna be quite a bit louder than mine. But I'm just gonna watch the the camera here. You ready? I'm ready. Low and right. Looks like Two targets low, maybe two targets right. Which is 20 inches, about two minutes low and two minutes to the right. Low right again, like you're right at the foot of the target stand on the right side. All right, so maybe three before I hit it. Man, that sun is brutal. Yeah, that sun, it's too bad we're not shooting the other direction. <laughs> The target would be easier to see and it wouldn't be so hard, you wouldn't get so much shadow and probably less mirage. Good news is the wind's died down on the hill from what I'm seeing. But the mirage has gotten stupid. Still same spot, man, low and right. Add, add another two minutes to your gun.
and then hold over two minutes to the left. All right, you hit directly, dead center, but you're still low. All right, dead center, but high. You're about one minute high. Crap, Just directly below it. You're getting closer. Still a little bit low. Damn, that rain? Yeah, I think the rain's here. I may have to put this other camera up. The temperature just dropped about six degrees too. <laughs> yeah. Just over top dead center. All around it. Yeah you're all around it dude but that's a small target. That's that's a one inch target at a hundred yards. And plus you're shooting through Mirage. The wind is changing constantly today and we've got rain. 
I mean, it's sprinkling on us right now, but the temperature did just drop several degrees. So that's going to affect the way your bullet flies through the air. The air gets a little more dense when it's cooler. Just slow it to the right. How hot's your barrel getting? Pretty warm. This will be my last one for now. Okay. For now. 16 inch barrel 308 at a thousand yards. That's that's a long shot, especially at a really small target. Oh. Yeah, low and right. Oh, that was it. 